What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com and today I'm super excited. Google has officially announced Android 9.0 is Pi. Now I made a video a couple days ago saying that the official launch date for Android was looking like August 20th because that's what Evie Leaks, Evan Blass had said on Twitter. He's usually very accurate, but it turns out that Google actually surprised us and we now have the official version of Android P today. So you can see no longer running the beta here. No beta markings on this. This is the official version of Android P. I just downloaded it to my Pixel 2 XL. It was only a less than 50 megabyte update uh, from the last version of the beta. Obviously, if you're coming from Oreo, it's probably gonna be over a gig or something like that. Today, I wanna talk about five features in Android Pi that you're actually gonna use on a daily basis. So this is for you guys who didn't really participate in the beta. If you've seen my beta videos, there's really not much new here, except I'm gonna talk about at the end a little bit about the Digital Wellbeing Initiative, which Google had never included in the beta. There's now a way to enable that on your device. So if you wanna talk about that, then you can stick around to the end and see what's going on with Digital Wellbeing. Otherwise, if you're brand new, you didn't participate in the beta, let's talk about the biggest changes to Android P, which is now Pi. The very first change, which is new, is the new gesture-based navigation. So now when you swipe up here in the bottom, you're gonna notice that you get not only a row of your frequently used apps, also the Google search bar, but now you can also slide along and switch apps. You've got your app switcher right there. You can also you know, jump into an app like that. And also if you slide all the way up, then it takes you right into your app drawer. Now Google has fine tuned this quite a bit since the first release. It was very buggy in the beginning. Uh, also now if you swipe on the pill button at the bottom, it just takes you right into your app switcher and lets you switch back and forth between all of your recently used apps. Very convenient, very smooth. They definitely have made some improvements. Now, one thing that you will notice is when you're in, actually in an app, for instance, like Google Chrome, that you do get the back button returning. You see the back button right there next to the pill shape. There is no recents over here because of course you can just swipe up and launch right into your recents menu. Now, there is a way to turn back on the previous version. So if you actually go into system here and then go to gestures, You'll see here that the swipe up on the home button here to get into the gestures, you can turn that on or off right now in the first version of Android Pi. But Google did say that later this year when the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL come out, that the gestures will be the only option available for navigating. The traditional home screen makeup of Android is pretty much going away with the launch of the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL later this year. So if you don't like gestures, um, I don't know what to tell you, you might want to get used to them because it looks like they're going to stick around. Uh, Google has no intention of getting rid of them. They're going to kind of commit to it with the Pixel 3 devices. So that's the first thing. Gesture is obviously the biggest thing UI-wise to get used to on the new version of Android Pi. The next thing that you might use and see quite a bit are app actions and slices. So slices are actually gonna get integrated a little bit more deeply this fall, but app actions are already here. If you use certain apps over and over again all the time, inside your app drawer like this, you'll see a couple of action buttons here. You can see I use eBay quite a bit during the middle of the day, and it's contextually aware, so it will tell you the apps that it thinks you wanna use at certain parts of the day. I can jump right into eBay and do an eBay search, jump back into what I was searching for before, or I can jump right back into my eBay selling page if I want to right here and see sort of what things I've sold on eBay in the last few days or months. Uh, also, if you use your Nest a lot, I often get Nest in my frequently used app actions up here. Uh, at nighttime, I typically turn the temperature uh, up before I go to sleep because I get a little cold at night. The Nest will appear up here during that time frame. So app actions, very nice. It's gonna appear inside your app drawer. App slices are going to come later this year, which are basically ways to contextually use one app inside of another. So say if you're in one app and you need to use another app, you'll be able to jump to that app just by clicking on a little integrated sort of link, which is the slice. You'll be able to use a slice of one app in another, very convenient, and very fluid. So that will be coming later this fall. Those are two things that I anticipate people are gonna use quite a bit in the new version of Android Pi. Now the next thing is actually a subtle thing, but it makes a big difference, and is that is how the auto-rotate is integrated into Android Pi. It's actually automatic, so I don't have auto-rotate turned on here in the quick settings, as you can see. But if I'm in Google Chrome like this, and I turn my phone into landscape mode, you'll notice over here, right here in the corner, right there, there's an auto-rotate button, and I can actually press that, and it will auto-rotate my screen. So this is really, really cool, because and you can see it goes right back the other way. Once I wanna go back into portrait, 
it appears again and I can click that. So you don't actually ever need to turn auto rotate on all the time. You have the option of just clicking the button when it's there when you need it. I prefer that because I do sometimes need to do auto rotate, but I don't want to turn it on because then at night when I'm trying to read, it'll be turning into landscape when I don't want it to. Uh, things like that if you're tilting your phone a certain way. I think it's a very convenient little feature that Google has added in Android Pie. It's something people are going to use quite a bit. The fourth thing is adaptive battery. Now this is something that's turned on by default, but obviously battery life is a huge deal with every phone. And adaptive battery has been built into Android Pie by Google. It was talked about quite a bit at Google I.O. It limits battery for apps that you don't use often. So if there's something that's open, but you're not using it very often, adaptive battery will actually optimize the battery usage to only really distribute to the things that you're using uh, on a frequent basis. And that's really nice. Of course, it's using Google's AI machine learning algorithms to do this. It is turned on by default, so you don't really need to do anything out of the box, but I do notice I get better battery life on my Pixel 2 XL on Android Pie, uh, all of the beta versions than I did on Oreo. Adaptive battery is definitely doing some nice magic there to help you get extended battery life. Now, the final thing is actually something that Google did not launch with the stable version of Android Pie, and that is digital well-being. Google talked about digital well-being quite a bit, back at Google I.O. This is a way to track how you're using your phone, also set timers on certain apps so that you can use those apps for only a certain amount of time each day. You also have a way to wind down at the end of the day by turning your screen to black and white, other things like that to monitor your usage. They did not launch that with a stable version, which was very strange. However, they did roll out a beta program today, which you can join if you want to get in on the digital well-being uh, right now and start using it. And it's going to roll out stable in the fall when the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL come out. So I'll drop the link below. This is the link right here. Sign up for the Android digital well-being beta. Enroll in the beta preview. All you got to do here is have a Pixel device and running Android 9 Pi. You put your email address, answer the question, do you have Android 9 Pie on your Pixel? Yes, hit submit, and then once you submit it, they will send you an email welcoming you to the beta program, and then they say within 24 hours, the digital well-being features will show up in your settings. So if you go over here into your settings, eventually you're going to see digital well-being just show up. Doesn't sound like there's anything you need to download or update. It's just going to be loaded from the system side uh, using your Google account and the information that you do have Pi on your Pixel. So once they do give me that update, I requested it earlier, I haven't seen it show up yet, I'll make a full video on digital well-being, but that's definitely the fifth feature that people are going to use a lot with Android Pi. It's a great tool, especially if you have kids to control how much they use the device. I don't know how much adults will use it, even though uh, we probably should. Anyway, guys, that is my full overview of the top five features you're going to use in Android Pie. Super excited that the official release is here. Uh, the Pixel, Pixel XL, Pixel 2, and Pixel 2 XL have OTAs pushing now if you're on the beta. Uh, you should get the update soon. Otherwise, as well, Google, of course, always rolls it out in stages. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification icon so I can make future videos like this. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter. The link's in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.